Hi, the Sci-Fi Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a 2006 American science fiction comedy film named Idiocracy. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. U.S. Army librarian Joe Bowers is handpicked by the military to partake in a top-secret military project involving suspended animation, he is selected for his average personality. Unfortunately, the project is abruptly shut down after the officer in charge of the experiment is arrested for his involvement in a corruption scandal, and Joe is left in his pod for 500 years. After he manages to escape from the pod, Joe finds himself in a society that has been incredibly dumbed down over the last few centuries, after an IQ test reveals Joe to be the most intelligent person alive, he is selected to become the Secretary of Interior in the hopes that he can alleviate many of the problems facing the country. Can Joe save the day? And can he find any way to get himself back in time? Or can he make things right and escape a rather bizarre execution? Idiocracy begins with the following narration, as the 21st century began, human evolution was at a turning point, natural selection, the process by which the strongest, the smartest, the fastest, reproduced in greater numbers than the rest, a process which had once favored the noblest traits of man, now began to favor different traits. Most science fiction of the day predicted a future that was more civilized and more intelligent, but as time went on, things seemed to be heading in the opposite direction. A dumbing down, how did this happen? Evolution does not necessarily reward intelligence. With no natural predators to thin the herd, it began to simply reward those who reproduced the most, and left the intelligent to become an endangered species. We cut to 2005, where a very average soldier named Corporal Joe Bowers works as a U.S. Army librarian, his superiors select him for a secret, year-long, military hibernation project since he really has no ambition to do anything other than the bare minimum in life. They also want a woman as part of their experiment, so they turn to a pimp named Upgrade for assistance, he gives them a prostitute named Rita for a price. The army seals the two in their respective hibernation chambers, soon after, MPs arrest the officer in charge, Lieutenant Colonel Collins, for starting a prostitution ring of his own based on Upgrade's own mentoring. The hibernation project is quickly forgotten, and the military base eventually makes room for a Futterkers, which will eventually change its name to Buttfuckers. 500 years pass and the hibernation chambers finally open from the great garbage avalanche of 2505, both Joe and Rita are alive and well, Joe crashes into Frito Pendejo's house. He's your typical American idiot of the future, his place is lined with crap, and a very prominent television screen adorns one entire wall, it's of course covered in cheap advertisements. Joe's arrival interrupts Frito's favorite show Ow, My Balls which is quite similar to today's Chive TV, annoyed with his appearance, Frito tosses Joe out the window his capsule just broke. Confused, Joe stumbles to a hospital where Dr. Lexus, MD diagnoses him as tarred and fucked up. When he notices Joe doesn't have a barcode tattoo on his left wrist, he can't charge him for his services, and panics. During this little outburst, Joe notices the date of March 3, 2505, on the Hot Naked Chicks and World Report magazine on the doctor's desk. That same date is also on his doctor's bill, and Joe suddenly realizes that 500 years have passed since the army put him in hibernation. He goes outside to find a world of crumbling buildings, mountains of garbage, and wall-to-wall -wall idiots. He runs away from the hospital, but soon finds himself under arrest at a Carl's Jr. vending machine for neither paying his hospital bill or having a barcode tattoo. Joe finds himself in court where his defense lawyer is the attorney at law, Frito Pendejo, ESQ Frito stupidly helps the prosecution convict Joe, and when Joe tries to defend himself, everyone thinks he talks like a fag. The judge immediately convicts Joe and orders him to prison, once there, a tattoo machine renames Joe as not sure, and the barcode tattoos him as that too. The jail mandates Joe take an IQ test, and when he finds out how simple it is, he realizes how stupid humanity has become. He uses this to his advantage, and easily tricks the prison guards into believing that he's just finished serving his time. They order him to the line that releases prisoners. Joe returns to Frito's apartment, wanting to know if a time machine exists. Frito says there is one, but he only agrees to help Joe after he promises him billions of dollars from a savings account that Joe will open once he returns to the past. Though Frito is unable to understand the concept of compound interest but takes Joe's word for it that Frito will earn $30 billion, minus the $20 billion for expenses making $80 billion. 
The two head out to find the time machine's location where they run across Rita, she still can't figure out that 500 years have passed until Joe's able to convince her, she says that not even 500 years will stop Upgrade from finding her. En route to the time machine, Joe and Frito find Rita. She does not know that she's been asleep for 500 years until Joe tells her, and even then, she expects Upgrade will find her. Frito leads them to a city-sized Costco, where Joe is rearrested when he accidentally allows his barcode to be scanned, however, this time, instead of prison, the police take him to the White House, there, President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho greets him. He's already seen Joe's IQ test which ranked him as the most intelligent man in the world, the president makes Joe's Secretary of the Interior to correct the United States food and crop shortages, dust bowl, crippled economy, mountains of garbage, and related matters. The other cabinet members are lampoons of contemporary politicians' nepotism, corporate loyalty corruption, and overemphasis on sex appeal in political media coverage. Joe learns that water has been replaced with Brondo, the thirst mutilator, which Joe likens to Gatorade, a drink advertised as rich in electrolytes for virtually every purpose, including crop irrigation. The Brondo Corporation started a successful ad campaign in an effort to boost their own sales, had, in the past, started a campaign claiming that water was only good for use in toilets. Over time, the electrolytes in Brondo accumulated in the soil, killed the crops, and caused the food shortage. After giving up on explaining to the cabinet that electrolytes are not conducive to plant life, Joe reintroduces the practice of watering crops. However, overnight, this causes the Brondo Corporation stock to fall to the point it's worthless, and great unemployment quickly follows, all without any visible improvement with the crops. The angry people riot and Camacho's government makes Joe their scapegoat, they sentence him to participate in what's known as Monday Night Rehabilitation, Romanesque-type gladiatorial games, crossed with a good old-fashioned American demolition derby. While Joe's rehabilitation is going on, Rita discovers the water Joe's using has made crops sprout in the fields, she takes Frito, and bribes a television cameraman to show the sprouting crops to the world. However, the city streets easily distract both the cameraman and Frito, the local Starbucks brothel has a sale going on, and the boys fight about going it. However, Frito suddenly remembers to film the crops sprouting, he grabs the camera, and films the fields. When President Camacho sees the thriving new plants on the stadium's big screen televisions, he pardons Joe before Stifler incinerates him with a flamethrower. There's a big celebration where Joe decides to stay in the present day to help repair America's lost civilization, President Camacho makes him Vice President of America. Meanwhile, Joe also learns that the time machine Frito referred to this whole time is just an old amusement park ride where a replica Charlie Chaplin serves as leader of the Nazi party, but not using stormtroopers to wage war on the world. He uses dinosaurs, the UN, pronounced the un, unnazied the world forever. After Joe serves a short term as vice president, the people elect him as Camacho's successor, Joe and Rita marry where they then have three of the world's smartest children. Frito, on the other hand, marries eight women, and fathers 32 of the world's dumbest children, thus the idiocracy continues on. A post credit scene shows a third hibernation capsule is shown opening, releasing a snappily dressed upgrade into the world, who struts down the street, as a pimp is wont to do.